Football's the biggest sport in the world, with billions of fans all over the globe who tune in year on year to a sport which has become integrated in a lot of people's daily life. But mixed in with the billions of casual fans of the game is a group of people who live and breathe football. A group of people who are willing to fight till the death for the football team they love. Today, we'll be getting into one of the most infamous football rivalries in London history and how two local teams' friendly competition turned fatal. Let's get into the the video. Now, football hasn't always looked like the game people love and enjoy today. In 1863, the Football Association was founded, now more known as the FA. The Football Association basically was and still is a governing body who oversee amateur and professional football in the UK. When the FA was founded back in 1863, only 11 football clubs all inside London were nationally recognised as structured clubs. But as time went by, football's popularity started to rise, especially in the working class community, young men would flock to their local football grounds to enjoy a game of football away from their family and work. Companies where these men worked started realising this. So to boost morale in the workplace, businesses mainly for labour workers would set up amateur football teams where their employees can enjoy a game of football every now and then. Some of the first companies to do this were located in the east end of London and that was how the formation of a club called Millwall was made. In 1885, workers of a company called JT Morton's, which was a factory that produced canned food, created the football team Millwall Rovers. Originally the team was based right beside its factory in East London more specifically in Tower Hamlets. Millwall quickly started seeing success winning several competitions around London, but 10 years after Millwall's creation, a company located less than 3 miles away would create a team that would make a rivalry football had not seen yet. That club would be called Thames Ironwork FC, now known as West Ham, created by the owners of a company who specialised in building and engineering ships, and they were located in an area called Cannon Town, which used to be part of Essex but is now East London. Just like Millwall, Thames Ironwork were finding some good success in the amateur leagues of East London and Essex. It would be in 1899 when both teams would first meet professionally in the FA Cup and tensions were high at the game. Both sets of fans and players from both teams worked for rival companies who battled for similar business opportunities. Thames Ironwork weren't big fans of Millwall as well due to a few friendly games they lost against them in the years preceding and this was a big game to see who the biggest club in East London was. Millwall won 2-1 which was a big blow to the Ironwork side but this would be the first of many exciting games to come. Between 1899 and 1950, Millwall and Thames Ironwork played each other a total of 60 times in league and cup fixtures. During this period a lot happened. In 1900 Thames Ironwork disbanded and took on the name we know the club to be today. West Ham United. Also, Millwall relocated its stadium from East London to the other side of the River Thames in South London. During one game in particular on the 17th of September 1906 between Millwall and West Ham, the whole match was filled with dirty tackles and aggressive football and the big commotion on the pitch was made after a West Ham player pushed a Millwall player onto a metal advertising board. But the commotion wasn't just left on the pitch. Fans from the stands on both sides started colliding with each other, resulting in big fights inside and outside of the stadium, in probably one of the first examples of football hooliganism in the sport. Then on August the 4th 1914, England declares war on Germany, resulting in Britain joining World War One. For around a year or so, this didn't affect the football leagues too much until conscription was introduced at the start of 1916, which forced any healthy men between the ages of 18 to 41 to go to war. But there were a few exceptions for medically unfit men. And and men who held down important jobs like teachers and workers in certain industries. This was when the wartime leagues were introduced, where Millwall and West Ham played each other a total of 33 times, with teams full of amateur players who didn't have to fight in the war. After World War I and II were done, football was back and booming more than ever. In 1948, football match attendance was the biggest it ever had been. Stadiums were filling out. These times, Millwall's form dropped quite a bit compared to how they were pre-wartime. 
Ham's. With them dropping to the third and eventually the fourth division of the Football League, West Ham were comfortably playing in the second division. But in 1958, West Ham was promoted back to the top division, which resulted in a long period of no games between West Ham and Millwall. This didn't put an end to the rivalry though. Then the 1970s came, which generally wasn't the best time for the UK. The unemployment rate was unusually high. Inflation was destroying a lot of people and football hooliganism was at its peak. Football fans all over the country started making what they called firms and these firms would travel all over the country supporting their team in away and home matches, representing their club and causing a lot of carnage on the way. In 1974, this new wave of hooliganism started getting international attention after a young fan from a football club called Blackpool was stabbed to death by a fan from a team called Bolton Wanderers inside the stadium. Football teams were forced to put in place segregation between the fans of clubs inside the stadiums and fences separating the pitches and fans were added after numerous pitch invasions and attacks on players were occurring in the early 70s. Multiple UK teams were also starting to get banned from competing in European competitions until English clubs were putting their fans in order. The 1970s also saw an increase of black players playing in the English football leagues and with racial tensions in the UK being sky high after an influx of immigrants coming in after the wars. Many non-white players received a lot of abuse from fans. The mix of far-right movements like the National Front and the rise of gangster culture are being idolised from gangsters like the craze. A lot of violence inside and outside of London was on the rise and at the forefront of football violence was West Ham and Millwall. West Ham had a firm set up which they called the Intercity Firm and Millwall set up one called the Bushwhackers. Both firms built up a big reputation for violence and it wouldn't be long until both teams would meet up once again. In 1972, both teams faced each other in a friendly game in hopes of bringing both sides together, stemming from one of Millwall's defenders called Harry Cripps, playing for both sides during his career. But despite this game being designed for just a harmless friendly between two sides who have a deep history, the meetup was anything more than friendly. The whole event was overshadowed by violence, before, during and after the game. Constant fights were breaking up between both sides. The game ended up being a goal fest with West West Ham eventually winning 5-3, but it was starting to become clearer that football violence had started becoming more than the sport itself. People who were fighting for each side weren't even attending the games. Certain football events were becoming nothing more than just a reason for random people to fight, and it wouldn't be long until this fighting turned to a tragedy. It was the 21st of September 1976. West Ham were facing another football club called Charlton, and Millwall were facing another team called Leighton Orion in the same evening. But but Millwall and West Ham fans weren't worried about the teams they were playing that day. They were looking for each other. So members of West Ham's intercity firm took a trip to a South East London train station called New Cross, hoping to bump into some Millwall fans who normally take that route to go to games. And as expected, the mob of Millwall fans were waiting for them and massive fights ensued. Six fans were arrested and a policeman was injured with a kick to his kidney. A young man also suffered severe head injuries, but sadly, an 18 year old Millwall fan called Ian Pratt fell from the train platform while the carnage was happening and unfortunately ended up getting run over by a train that was passing by. Millwall fans were devastated by the loss of one of their young fans and to add fuel to the fire, West Ham hooligans created a new chant mocking the situation which they would sing at certain games. At this point the meaningless feud turned personal and Millwall fans were looking for revenge and soon they would get their chance. In 1978 West Ham had been relegated to the second division after a disappointing season from their side. Waiting for them was Millwall, who was already in the second division. And on the 7th of October 1978, both sides would meet once again. A day Millwall fans were preparing for. Weeks beforehand, leaflets were getting handed out at Millwall home matches, with the words a West Ham fan must die to avenge Ian. But the police were one step ahead, with over 500 police officers patrolling any train stations and areas where both fans could clash. Extensive searches and segregation were also taking place all day to prevent anything from popping off. But despite the heavy policing, fighting between both sides were occurring throughout the streets near the West Ham ground, which resulted in 70 arrests altogether. Luckily no one was severely injured. West Ham managed to leave the fixture winning 3-0. After years of football violence, in the 1980s the police said enough is enough, especially after a 1985 disaster at a stadium in Belgium which killed 39 people 
was blamed on English fans who were in the stand. At this point, English fans were banned from entering any European stadiums for five years, and it was now time for something to be done to save English football's reputation. So the police force set up an operation, which sent undercover officers to a select few teams which had the biggest issues of hooliganism. Two of these teams being West Ham and Millwall. In a long-winded operation, undercover officers rose up in the ranks of these clubs' firms to get to the bottom of who was involved. There was actually a movie based loosely based on this operation called ID, but after a few years, the operation was abandoned due to a few undercover officers messing up. The police were back to square one, and in 1986, tragedy struck once again. West Ham and Millwall were facing each other in the cup game at West Ham Stadium Upton Park, and the motions were still high after the 1976 murder of the young Millwall fan. Before the game, fans clashed at train stations around London as expected, but tragedy struck when a 19-year-old West Ham fan called Terry Burns was stabbed six times at a train station in central London, leaving him dead. After this incident, many fans woke up realising that this feud had gone way too far, and many Millwall fans paid their respect to Terry, who had been the second victim of this heated rivalry. Since this day, West Ham and Millwall have met up a total of 13 times again, with each meeting still ending up in some sort of violence. Police has cracked down a lot on football hooliganism in the last decades, with harsher sentences for violence and heavy policing and intercepting on days that rival matches are taking place, but it's still something that is very much in the game. During one of England's 2006 World Cup games against Paraguay, around 100 Millwall and West Ham fans clashed at a showing in Canary Wolf, resulting in 16 injuries. Not to also mention the 2009 Upton Park riot, which occurred after a cup game between West Ham and Millwall in August 2009, which literally could just be a whole video by itself. In the 0-10-11 season, West Ham were relegated back to the second division, where Millwall already was. Millwall fans were so excited about this, that a Millwall supporter hired the plane during West Ham's final game against Wigan Athletic, which had a sign praising the West Ham's then manager for getting them relegated, which flew over the stadium they were playing at in full view of West Ham fans. On August the 24th, 2017, yet another tragedy occurred, after a Nottingham Forest fan called Paul O'Donnell said the words West Ham to a Millwall supporter. The Millwall fan then attacked Paul, which resulted in him dying from his injuries. A year after this attack, a moment of solidarity was shown between both clubs, after a young West Ham fan called Isla Catton needed to raise money to treat her rare form of cancer. Both Millwall and West Ham fans contributed significantly to the cause, and the Millwall supporter even done a sponsored run in the West Ham tour to show this cause is more than the rivalry, which was a great thing to see. Shortly after her eventual death in 2022, Millwall and West Ham released a joint statement showing their condolences. In the media, many films and documentaries have been made about this historic feud, which has become so ingrained in the clubs. Tensions have died down quite a bit, but deep down, both clubs will always be each other's biggest rivals. It's been your boy Kid Nerd, and peace out.